I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order. Before I start the Pledge of Allegiance, I'm going to verify one thing with Thomas. We have the dividers in between us. Is that uh, CDC recommended that we do not need a mask as long as we keep six foot or have a Correct. divider in between us? Correct. And I don't need a mask to conduct a meeting. With that, I'm going to start the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. Good morning. Next I have is today's approval of today's agenda. I'll make a motion to approve today's agenda. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next is approval of the minutes of 11 10 2020 and 11 10 of 2020 standards. Lance, I'll make a motion to approve the regular minutes from November 10th, 2020, and the canvassing from November 10th, 2020 as presented. I'll second it. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Most carried. Next is approval of claims for payment of 11 18 2020. I'll make a motion to approve the November 18 2020 claims for payment. I'll second that. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Most carries. Utility permit. What do you got, Taylor? Uh, nothing important to report on the road department. Just Business as usual for us. Good. I have one question, Taylor. How is the uh, sign replacement going for some of our wind blown signs, especially B65? It is a can. I mean, he went with stop signs first, right. obviously, and yeah. Uh, okay, just work it back through it. Okay, mm -hmm. that's all I had. Yeah. Here. Thank you. You bet. Well, from there, I have 902, and I will open the public hearing on the road vacation easement of 170th Street. Uh, Taylor, you want to? Lighten us on that one. So we attached some photos of because I knew a question would be asked, where is it? So you can look at the map and see where it is. Uh, it's only one landowner, so she's really the only one with any right, and she's the one that requested it. So essentially, we had to move a road and old land back to the same person we bought it from. We no longer have any purpose for owning this or for having an easement on this road. Correct. Yep. So as you can see, there's the Highway 20 entrance close to, you know, close to Fildora. And it's that a little bit. And then you take the gravel roads over to 170th Street, over by the old Harden City. And if you just go to the third view, Mike. There you go. So there you can see because they flew the overhead this year. So that kind of was nice for me when I was making this picture. It's kind of surprised. So you can actually see what we did. So the old red bed there is on your south, and we just built the new one to the north. So we're essentially, you know, we've already bought the land. So we now have easement on the new road bed, so we don't need that old one anymore, and she wants it back, so I had no problem with that. Okay. It's a public hearing. Uh, anybody should be able to ask questions at this time. They have the ability to unmute themselves. Correct. So if there are any public comments right now, it's time to ask. Hearing no public comments, I didn't ask for a motion to close the public hearing. Make a motion to close the public hearing. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Renee. Aye. BJ. Aye. Lance. Aye. Motion carries, public hearing is closed. Next, we move on to the resolution to vacate easement of 170th Street. And I'd just like to point out this same resolution is quit planning. I guess I'd make a motion to approve the resolution to vacate 
easement of 178th Street as presented. I'll second it. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none. Roll call. BJ. Aye. Renee. Aye. Lance. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, Taylor. Yep. Next, we have is a request for tax abatement of the Ellsworth Neighborhood Investment Group. Last week, we met with uh, Taylor Nieder off, and he requested the second half of last year's taxes be removed due to the fact the building had been torn down. Uh, talking to Michelle, talking to Don, there's a procedure that needs to take place in order for them to do this. Those procedures have not happened. The request is fine to ask for it, but uh, they go through a zoning board of adjustments, I believe. Is Don on by chance? Yes, he is. Let's, let's have Don unmute himself. I'm here. Can you hear me? I'm on the <laughs> yeah, well, first they call us up and We'll get send them out a request for change of assessment when they tear down something. But in Iowa Falls, Iowa Falls has demolition permits they send to us, and we didn't receive anything on this building. And they didn't. They said they've called this office a couple of times. My staff and I don't remember anything whatsoever of them calling on it. And so we didn't know that building was even tore down. And he keeps saying it was tore down way before, but he's never given us a date. As far as I know, it was removed in 2018, and I removed it uh, for 1-1 of 2019. So I don't know unless they've got some other kind of proof to prove that it was removed. Uh, they didn't follow procedures, and they just went ahead and uh, filed a claim to the supervisors because they don't want to pay the taxes. So, But I feel they're obligated. Okay. And uh, during that process, if they felt the taxes should have been removed, there are deadlines, and who do they report to? And what are the deadlines? Say that again. Who? File an appeal. When would that have taken place? And they would have had to file to the Board of Review if uh, they didn't. And then once, if the Board denies it, then they have to go to PAB, which is property assessment appeal board and it's as a state board and then if they don't like what the agreement is then they have to go to district court so. okay so i said that wrong when i said zoning board of adjustments it was the other one yeah board. it's a board of review mm -hmm. well do anybody have any questions for don would anybody like to entertain a motion? Uh, Lance, I'd make a motion to deny the request for tax abatement. I'll second it. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Uh, I want the record to indicate that the city of Iowa Falls does not have a demolition permit on file or recorded. And so that initial step of the process was not followed in order to get to uh, any means of tax abatement relief. Is there any other discussion? There are no more. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next, we can move to the wellness program payments. <clears throat> okay. Our wellness program um, had incentives for the employees to per, um, participate in certain events throughout the year, um, which would then be a, mon a monetary value to them through, which is paid out through our health insurance plan. Um, in order to make those payments, we have to transfer funds. So mm -hmm. I would make a motion to approve the wellness program payments um, to be paid out to those employees that participated. I'll second that motion. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? This was approved to do this back in January or February that we would do this, if I recall. I don't recall exactly. I, I don't remember but... the month, but at the beginning of the year, we approved to do this wellness plan in this manner. Right. 
and now the people have conducted it. It is Hardin County had 38 employees participate. Hardin County Solid Waste had one. City of Eldora had four. Greenbelt Health had four. Iowa Falls Area Development Corporation had one. Um, just making sure people know who is all involved in this. And this is the insurance company. Not the county paying this. The pool. Correct. The, pool. the insurance pool. Correct. So we're just responsible for the pool. So that all these people are all owners of this pool. Um, any other discussion? Hearing no more, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion well, carries. Next, I have a change of statuses for the sheriff office. Next, I have two changes statuses for the sheriff office. The first being um, the hiring of Jacob uh, Jacone as a correctional officer, permanent part time at a rate of sixteen forty eight an hour, effective November eighteenth, twenty twenty. I will second it. Being moved and seconded. Any discussion? Amen. Hey, all in favor say aye. 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 Much carries. Lance, the second one I have is a change of status for the Hardin County Sheriff's Office for Lucas Wiedemeyer, effective November 18th, 2020, correctional officer at a rate of 16.48 an hour as well. I'll second that one. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing no more, all in favor say aye. 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 Coach carries. Next, I have is a resolution amending resolution number 2020-15. Do, Thomas, Thomas, do you want to talk about this? Go ahead first. <clears throat> so yeah, um, due to the increase in the COVID-19 cases in the county and across the state, and then uh, the proclamation by the governor of the state of Iowa on Monday was effective uh, 1201 Tuesday a.m. Um, instituting a face covering mandate for employees in the workplace. All employees and visitors to county building will be required to wear a face covering. The employees will be expected to wear a face covering when not at their workstation. All the change will take effect if you approve the resolution today. And Hardin County is committed to protecting the health of their employees. We also encourage employees to stay home when showing any signs or symptoms of illness or being in close contact with a positive individual. Testing is available to all, um, whether employees or not, uh, by calling Test Iowa or by calling the COVID line at Hanson Family Hospital because they're still doing testing there. And uh, we also recommend that the public uh, follow the same guidelines in their businesses. Each business can set their guidelines. Uh, the governor's proclamation kind of encourages that, but each business is able to make their own mandate inside their buildings, and that's what this resolution would be doing, is making a mandate for all county employees in their work in the workplace, and then anybody coming into a county building is required to wear a face covering upon entry of the building. Okay. Lance, I'd make a motion to approve the resolution amending resolution number 2020-15. Um, I will second it. Then move and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. DJ. Aye. Renee. Aye. Lance. Aye. Motion carries. Next, I have the emergency management update. Quick that down. <laughs> um, this has been a fairly active week. Um, the EOC group spent most of Monday up until about five o'clock Monday evening working on uh, things that had come up due to COVID um, with uh, release from the sheriff that um, there's uh, four cases in the jail now, um, but it has been contained. Uh, I just talked to him this morning and there's nobody else showing signs or symptoms or anything and they uh they've taken steps to mitigate and we've increased the amount of ppe that they have uh i took that over to them and then uh oh, let's see um our process for 
PPE distribution and getting PPE is going to change. So um, if we need more PPE in the county, then I'll be going down to Des Moines to pick up the state. It's gone from National Guard delivering, DOT delivering, to now it's being put out into pods, which Hardin County is in uh, District 1 of uh, the Homeland Security Region districts, and our pod is in Des Moines. So we still go through a request process and then go to Des Moines and pick up what we need. Okay. So, and then I'm also working, I'm still working on the, I just got an email yesterday from the accountant with the CARES funding that the state hired. And um, I will be putting together more documentation for that audit and firm to get our 15% uh, uh, local match of the public assistance money. They need more uh, documentation than what I sent to FEMA, so I'll be getting that together and sending it down here. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Tana. From there, <coughs> we'll go ahead and open it up to public comments. <coughs> Lance, Donna. Go ahead. When I first started coming to these meetings, can you hear me? Yes. When I first started coming to these meetings, Lance, I told you that if I were going to criticize, I would do it to your faces, not behind your back. A statement you said you appreciated. Since evidently you couldn't hear me last week, I will repeat this week instead of sending a letter to the editor. About two years ago, I sat in that room and said, this buck stops there at that table. When good things happen in this county, you three as leaders of this county deserve some of the credit. Equally, when bad things happen, you also deserve some of the blame. You are the elected leaders of this county. In the last nine weeks, there have been nine deaths, 10 as, as of this morning, from the virus in this county. An average of about one a, a week. While we are not allowed to be dead as people, the truth is that treating them as only numbers removes the humanity from the problem. They were people with families, friends, and lives that mattered, not just the statistics. In consideration of numbers, what will that average be by Christmas? From March to the end of September, there were about 307 positive cases. It took nearly seven months to get to that point. In the last seven weeks, this count has tripled that number. And yet, you three have sat there in silence. It has been said that the rise in numbers at Ellsworth College, Hubbard Care Center, and Grand Javanti are now on the downhill side. While that is true, what about the side effects of those outbreaks? Once you have been exposed to this virus, it can take up to 10 days to develop symptoms, or you may have few or no symptoms at all. During that time, you are still contagious and very capable of spreading this disease. For example, a college student gets exposed to and catches the virus. In the next 10 days, the student goes about their business, going to class, going to a store, a restaurant, maybe a bar without a mask. How many people are exposed during that 10 days? Let's just say 10 people. So in the next 10 days, those people go about their business without a mask. Now we have 100 people exposed. This 
exposure continues exponentially until we get to the point where we are today. You are either part of the problem or you are part of the solution. There is no in between. And as county leaders, there should not have been silence on your part. We have only one silver bullet to fight this war, and that is a mask. Masks and social distancing. And even though a mask will not give you 100% protection against the spread, it will help tremendously to stop you from spreading it to other people like your parents, grandparents, or the child next door who may already have a condition that will hinder their ability to fight this disease. And there are the hospitalizations. First, the positive counts start to rise. Last observation, to the first week later, the number of people being admitted to the hospital also begins to rise. The number of deaths will rise after that. Now, our medical community has learned a great deal about how to treat patients. There will still be many deaths. And unfortunately, Donna, we're losing you again. You cannot, can you hear me? I can. Um, can. Can you wrap it up, though? You're getting kind of long on this one. All right. Real quickly, BJ, your, your 15 and 20-year-old certificates for one, two, and three-hour seminars about fire don't mean anything during a pandemic. Uh, we're, we're getting personal now. All right. Our young men and women in the military risk their bodies and their lives to protect their fellow citizens. Why is it that civilians cannot risk a little discomfort to protect their fellow citizens? Wouldn't this be considered simply our patriotic duty. As our county leaders, wouldn't you three at the very least be asking all of your fellow citizens to wear masks, social distance, and be more careful? Thank you. All right, thank you. Any other public comments? Yes, I, I have one. Um, can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I have a couple. Um, the uh, security guard, is he going to be wearing a mask when we come in and enter the courthouse building? Yes, they have been. Uh, no, they haven't been. I've entered the uh, courthouse and the secure the last time I had my temperature checked and they showed me how to do it because I wasn't sure I wasn't Wait. putting my wrist in right they were not wearing a mask well, we, we just passed the ordinance okay. today they will they will have it on they will okay that's all I, I wanted and um, to reiterate on on Donna's thing um, the governor kind of put this out there kind of weird about, um, so, you know, if you're not six feet apart, then you should be wearing a mask. And if you don't know, wear a mask. But what about the people that run into the grocery store, buy a case of beer or, or mingle a little bit and they're in their 15, the and they're in their 15. Hello? We, we don't don't have that jurisdiction. She left that up to the, to the property owners to decide what they'll have in their places. She does encourage within six, uh, anybody less than six feet for over 15 minutes needs to wear a mask, but she also left it open as to if you're just running in and out and you don't hang out with anybody for more than 15 minutes, you should be fine. 
that that's how it was left but that that has no authority from this board whatsoever but why can't you make that authority because look at the other people you're putting in jeopardy that are shopping there that are Blame. are in in jeopardy like the, like the girl at the counter or the guy at the counter checking you out you Pauline, you're talking you i answered your question before you asked the question we don't have that authority. We can't make authority. We are, it's not given to us. Our authority is only in the residential or the oh. is only in the um, rural oh. area of the county. We don't have the authority to mandate something within any of the city limits um, of any of the towns in Hardin County. So the the encouragement is what we can do, and that was given earlier in the meeting which answers both uh, Donna and Pauline, the encouragement is for people to go out and wear masks. And in the past, when we addressed the, um, the Board of Health's recommendation, we, we also recommended at that time that people are encouraged to wear masks. It was not mandated by us, but we agreed with the Board of Health that we re recommend people to wear masks. So, so the authority, just, just so I'm clear on all this, the authority stops with us in the unincorporated areas and the office buildings of the public, the county office buildings, not the city ones. They have their own authority. Last, may I say a one sentence? Yes. The more often you three verbally make that statement, the more power it holds. If it's made every single meeting, hopefully more people will actually hear it. Thank you. Are there any other public comments? Uh, yeah, um, Julie Dunn, yeah. Um, eight, nine months later, you finally do this. Congratulations. Um, and it's too bad you couldn't have done it before the election, but I can I understand the motivation behind that. But thanks for finally doing something, I guess. Any other public comments? Hearing none. I go to other business. I have no other business. Nothing there. Then I can ask for adjournment or recess. I will make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries or adjourned.